Welcome back to DXB today, where we are very excited to welcome a adventurer, author, and mindset coach. Please welcome Ant Middleton into the studio. Ant, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Listen, you've welcomed me. Thank you ever so much for having me, and it's great to see you. Yes, great uh, to see you too. It's definitely great to see you. Now, Ant, I'm going to go right into the deep question. You've been through a lot in your life. I have. SAS, you've done a lot of things. How does it go from that to where you are now, trying to encourage positivity? Well, I suppose it's a natural progression. You know, I've seen so much negativity in life that if I adopted a negative mindset, then the outcome or the solution would be negative. And I've been in those situations. I've been in that scenario where, you know, I found myself in that hole. And I just simply break it down, you know, break it down simply. Look, is it a negative situation? If it's a negative situation, you have to tackle it with a positive mindset. That's the only way you're gonna get out of that situation. Too many times I tried to tackle a negative situation with a negative mindset, and guess what? The outcome has always been, uh, always been negative. So it's a process that I went through the hard way. You know, through hardship, suffering, you, you build resilience, you realize what you're capable of, and then you start to see life through a positive lens because you start to believe in yourself, you start to realize what you're capable of, you start to see how far you've gone in life, and then you start to see the positives from, from, the, uh, from that process. So it's hugely important that you, uh, you see life through a positive lens because there's so much negativity out there that the easy thing to do is to adapt or adopt a negative mindset. And a lot of people do, and they find themselves in a, in a dark hole. Mm -hmm. And I see it far too often with mental health uh, going on nowadays. It's, it's, it's abundant. There's loads of it out there at the moment. And it's just about being honest with yourself and being able to really break down a situation, a person, whatever it may be, and find the positive from within. So how would you say the, the physical comes into the, the mental aspect and in terms of like, do, how do you challenge yourself now? You know what I mean? Do you know what? The physical is the action, right? It's almost uh, the proof in the pudding because you, you have a thought process. You almost know that you need to action something, right? Because if you keep that negative thought process in your head and you don't action it, it's just going to bounce around your head. Right? And all you're going to do is you're going to pass it on to your, your family, pass it on to your loved ones, pass it on to your work colleagues, and it's going, to, it's going to bring you down. So when you have a negative thought in your head, you have to action it, because once you action it, you, you almost play it out. You almost uh, feed it, if that makes sense. And when you do that it, and you come out the other end, that's when you realise, wow, you know, it's all about the commitment phase. It's all, all, always about having that thought process and going to yourself, right, I need to action this, I need to play this out. And it's the same with emotions. A lot of people talk about the physical and the psychological, but emotional intelligence is hugely important as well. You know, we as men have a horrible thing of just locking them away, of not using them, right? Correct. But when you feel those emotions, you've got to acknowledge what it is, find out where it's come from, and then action what needs to be done. And I'll give you a quick example. You know, if you're sad, why am I sad? First, acknowledge the emotion. Why well, I'm sad because a loved one passed away. Right, that's completely normal. Right, how do I action that in a positive way? Let me go and speak to my loved ones. Let's go and talk about memories. Let's go and talk about this person in a super positive way. Therefore, I'm actioning it, I'm playing it out. And therefore, the outcome will always be positive. So when it comes to physical, emotional, and psychological, I call it sort of the trilogy. It's hugely important that you break it down and not overthink. It's important that you don't overthink, but you just break it down into a situation, like I said, is it positive, is it negative, right, wrong, good, bad, negative, positive. And that's what I do with everything that I tackle in life. Game on, bro. I love what you're saying, by the way, but you know, kids nowadays, you know, when they have, I've been my talks and motivational talks and all of that, and, and I, got, I get a lot of questions from uh, students saying, you know, but when we have negative thoughts, when we feel down, we don't want to go tell our friends because they think that we would look weak in front of them or in front of our family. Absolutely. So how, how would you look that or how would it change in uh, you know, the coming few years, et cetera? You know, I could see that it's gonna be changing as well, for sure, mm -hmm. uh, with the different mindset that's changed, with mm -hmm. different, the way that different kids talk in school and all of that, but what, would you, what advice would you give to these young kids? Well, it's people like yourself. It's shows like this. It's people like myself that's gonna make the changes. Okay, we have to, someone has to come to the forefront. Something has to come to the forefront. We have to talk about these things. It's hugely important, right? You don't know unless you talk. That's what I say to people. How do you know? People say, talking doesn't work for me. I'm like, have you, have you spoken? Have you spoke out? And they're like, no. And I'm like, how do you know then? Mm -hmm. at, le at least try it. And then once you commit that one time, guess what? You, you'll go on to another commitment and you'll go into another commitment, especially with children nowadays. We talk about children, the future 
of, of, you know, of this planet. Um, life is so complicated and the mind and the body is so complicated. When you put complication on top of complication, guess what you're gonna get? You're gonna get extreme complication, right? Yeah. The mind is such a complicated uh, a thing. The body is such a complicated thing. You have to simplify it. And we simplify it between each other by talking things through, understanding the trigger, understanding what the emotion is, understanding the thought process behind what you're thinking. And it's through communication only. You have to sit down and talk to people. And you might not even realize you're doing it, just like now, me just talking about what I practice and what I preach. I'm feeling good about it already. I'm feeling positive and you know, I'm, I'm feeling good. So it's hugely important with kids. Um, that and that's they, why you've done a, a kids book. You've done a kids book. Yes, as well. I have. Yeah, yes, yeah, 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 so have you. Yes. You've done a children's book, right? No, not yeah, ish. You'd ish. say a book, but <laughs> okay. not a full book like okay. yours. Yeah. And yourself, you've done a children's. I've book. I've done a children's yeah. book. Yeah, yeah, but your your one is is focused at a, a certain age group, yeah. um, and it's 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 fantastic. I mean, you've done you've done serious books, and now you've gone back to the basics with children's books as well, and I, I love that about that. So. When you wrote your children's books, were they geared towards men? No. Oh, um, oh, to boys, sorry, sorry, rather than girls, because do you not find that girls are better expressing <laughs> themselves than men? Because we love to talk about our feelings. <laughs> I mean, it's what we're really, really good to. And I know I've got a man at home who hates to talk about feelings. So <laughs> yeah, do, you, do you find that, like, you know, enhancing and kind of, like, you know, giving young boys the opportunity, like, to have that kind of positive mindset and talk about feelings? But it's the interaction between the two. Yeah. You know, men wouldn't be as wouldn't be men without women, and women wouldn't be or girls wouldn't be uh, girls without yeah. boys. You know, that's why I talk about communication. It's got to be a communal thing. It's got to be because you will give me something completely different to what, for example, your man yeah. would would do, and it's the same with with your wives. And that it, it's it's hugely important that that community mixes together because women do have you know emotionally deal with things differently. Mm. Men don't. You know, women think a certain way men don't or they think differently and when you blend the two together um, the outcome you know you will find us you will find a solution to it but when it's a one-minded or one-way conversation then sometimes it's harder to find to find out what's really going on mm. deep down definitely and thank you so much for joining us I know you're a very busy man you've got SAS Australia you're doing your thing over there so we're very blessed and lucky and privileged to have you here uh, this is not going to be the last time you're going to come back right we're going to have you back for sure Thank Definitely, so and I'm going to have you on SAS Australia. <laughs> all four it. of you, all wow. four of you. <laughs> get ready, boys, get ready. Well, it's going to be an SAS UAE, so yeah, listen, yeah, yeah. you cool. could be one of the instructors with me. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Now, I went down to a multi-concept fitness studio to take a little bit of the seriousness out of boxing. I mean, you get all of the benefits and the offerings, you, the, the mental mindset, the training is there, but you don't have to step into the ring and get knocked about. This is Boxica. Living in this fantastic city, there's always things to do. But one of the things we need to do is stay fit. Now, with an array of options, where do you do, what do you go, depends on your fitness levels and who you are. So I've been told there's a fantastic place called Boxica, and that is my kind of place. So I'm gonna check it out. So Cyrus, this is a fantastic concept. Uh, I love this outdoor space as well. So you've got an indoor and an outdoor space. Yeah. Tell me the inspiration about it. So we started a week after COVID lockdown, actually. It was tough the first year of business, but I saw a trend happening starting in America where it was bringing boxing and fitness to the masses. So normally a typical boxing gym is sweaty, bloody, dirty. Everyone's you know got bruises and stuff. We try to bring boxing to the masses without getting bruised and make it a fun, unintimidating atmosphere. Yeah, because you know, that was one of the things I always loved about uh, boxing. Like I've not done a lot of it, but I love the training aspect. Yeah. You know, I love that side of it. And, it, and it's, it's a fitness level like none other. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. So what's, uh, what's on the plans for the future? I know you've got some stuff with the Dubai Fitness Challenge as well. Yeah. So tell us more about that. Yeah, we are, we've expanded a lot. I mean, we started with the one studio, the boxing and fitness studio. Then we made this massive outdoor strength and conditioning area. And we expanded into an indoor cycling area. We've got a cafe and another boxing circuits area. So for the last three years, we've been continually growing, listening to our members and expanding 
as what they want. And recently we've been doing a lot with mental health as well. So we actually do breathing and ice bath sessions here on the roof where people come in, learn how to slow the nervous system down, breathe properly. And we also give them the treat of getting in a zero degree ice bath. <laughs> Now, this is the thing because uh, a lot of people don't really understand. A lot of people just look at the physique and the outside of the body, yeah. but the inside of the body is, is hugely important. Absolutely. It's way more, especially we live in Dubai. People are busy. They're stressed out more than ever. And having a regular fitness routine, something to bring you back down to earth and just get that stress out, like I said, has been massive for our members and the people coming in. You know, we, we pride ourselves on being like a second home for people, we are a community. So when people come here, they don't get egos, they don't get, um, you know, they feel relaxed like it's their second home and they can just be themselves. They don't feel embarrassed. And that again is, is great for the mental health as well. This is like an outlet for them. Thank you so much, Cyrus. This is a, a great concept. I love the, the community feel that you've created here as well. I'm gonna come back here for sure. Oh, wait, wait, wait where are you going? Sit. No, no, we're gonna do some exercise now. Come on, let's come inside the studio. Yeah, but Put your boxing gloves on, let's uh, go, come on. Uh, mate, I suppose I've got it there. <laughs> Brilliant vibes. Great gym. I'm putting down my gloves, but I'm not hanging them up. I'll be back. Lane, keep doing what you're doing because it is working, my friend. Now it's time for the daily roundup. Amy, what have you got for us? Well, a barber shop in Dubai has become a safe space for cuts and candid chats. Owner Carlos Gamal of CG Barber Shop in Dubai Media City says that men come for a cut but stay for a coffee. For a coffee, propping up in their laptops or even to chat and socialize. And Gamal says it's important that we use this platform and community to normalize the discussions of mental health along men. So, Barbershop is currently offering a Movember package where 15% of proceeds will be donated to Al Jalia Foundation. Guys, what do we think? Are you the kind of gentlemen to go for a little cut and a chat? Definitely. I mean, I haven't done it so much here, I'm going to be honest with you, but uh, when I used to live in Jordan, all the guys would hang out in the barbershop, and I think that's a very... It's a very Arab thing, I think. Yeah. What do you think? It yeah, is? Uh, I, I do it every single week. I stay there for literally two hours. So I go out like 9 a.m. on Friday and I stay there till like 11 a.m. Just a conversation. It's, you feel like it's a, sp a safe space. You sit down, you have a conversation, you have your coffee, you have your tea, you connect with them. So yeah, it's, I find it big over here. You're actually involved with CG Barbershop. Yes. What did you do with them? So I've been their clients now for four years. So I've been with them. I've been going every single Friday for the past four years. Wow. Every single well, if I'm not in, the, in town, then obviously not. But then, apart from that, every single Friday, I go there at 9 a.m., stay till 11 a.m., cut my hair, sit down for a coffee, have a chat. Everyone gets to know each other, and everyone's just sitting and start a discussion. Lane, do you ever, like, have that thing where you want to go to a different barber, and you're really worried your original barber's going to find out oh, about it, because they get really <laughs> upset? Mate, I can't <laughs> even tell you this happens to me every single time I go to the barber here, because uh, the barber shop that I go to is one of the oldest barber shops in Satwa, right? It's about 42 years old and um, it got knocked down so the barbers uh, went to one place and another one went to one place so they're literally 100 meters away from each other so I, I have to sneak to go to one you have to sneak <laughs> past the other one sneak past the other. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so bad when I go to one so I try and uh, mix it up a little bit but yeah I mean my my barbers plural now uh, are my psychiatrists like I, they, I they, love yeah. Yes. I love the fact he said that because it is something. That's it. It is. It is a therapist. You call it whatever you want. The therapist, it's psychiatrist. True. But you just sit and connect, and you just open up. I yeah. think it's purely a male space as well. Yeah. So men can sit together. They don't have to worry about how they're coming across and stuff. Yeah. And I know Amy that the salon is quite the I same thing. I was just thing. gonna say that. Yeah, I was gonna say like when women go to the salon, we go for the chat. We go for the you know the banter. And like you said, like your hairdresser is your therapist. I've had the same hairdresser now for 
11 years while I've Would been you ever here. go to another hairdresser? I wouldn't dare. <laughs> and shout out to Anas. Um, he's, he's like my therapist. Like we sit, we talk everything out. You know, we it's a great space. And as well, girls will go to the salon together to go get the nails done. We have that coffee culture when you're in there as well. I think it's That's great. That's the difference, I think. Girls will go together. Men will go to the barbershop and become friends with who, yeah. whoever's in there. 100%. Yeah. yeah, they wouldn't go with, I wouldn't go with my brother. Or my be like, brother. hey, like, come guys, should we go to the barbershop? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Be like, let's go. It's Friday 9 a.m. <laughs> yes, indeed. So after the break, we talk to a consultant urologist to find out more about the new treatments for prostate cancer. So stay right here.